I made a video a, a little while ago on going to the European Union website, or a website made by the European Union, it has a whole bunch of solar powered data, and you can get data on tracking and all that. I think I, I made it too long and too uh, detailed, probably. This video is going to work from that yield analysis and go through some more performance uh, uh, ratio things, uh, analysis related to the performance ratio. And I'm going to just do a little bit of history, a tiny little bit. I'm going to review the solar power yield stuff, which was, there was one key conclusion on that one, and that was that you can't, cannot really use the same, uh, diff different sources give you, seem to give you different results. Then I'm going to go through, well, how do we take the basic solar power that hits a plane and convert that to the real output of electricity, which is, involves the performance ratio. And the big deal about the performance ratio is getting this temperature coefficient right. And I'm going to try to show you how to, how to do some reasonable kind of uh, work on that. In a later video, I'm going to go through a financial model and some carrying charge analysis. So, just like I told you, uh, the first, the objective really of this is to get to the performance ratio and show you how you can make some adjustments. I've got a whole bunch of tools that I'm going to try to show you where to find them and how to use them in doing this. Okay, a later video is going to go through a financial model and then I want to go through this carrying charge analysis and link it to the financial model and show you how you can do a analysis of whether it's worthwhile to put tracking or not. Okay, now here's some of the tools that you can find. First, I have this read PV insight, which is just the a way to get the current cost of the the solar power. It uses this workbook start open. And then the last video I had had a whole bunch of stuff using the read PDF to Excel file for getting all the data from this very nice website into Excel. Now there are a few uh, statistical tools. I want to show you where to find them and a little bit how to use them. I made a database of actual year-to-year, month-to-month solar production. So you can see, well, not how consultants said it's going to vary with their P90s, but how it actually has. Now, in this video, I'm going to use some, make some waterfall charts to illustrate these, diff these various loss factors that go into the performance ratio. I hope you can see each one of them has a little tool. Then there are a number of different project finance models, and some people have asked me, which one, do you have a template, or which one should I really use? Then we'll go through the carrying charge analysis, and to get there, there are a number of databases that really delve into the cost of debt and cost of equity. We'll make a carrying charge analysis and go finally to this LCOE, this levelized cost of energy, I suppose, spreadsheet, okay? Just a little bit. I, when I go through this, I don't know. Maybe everybody knows this, but this is fascinating. That this is 457 euro per megawatt hour. It's 445 cents euro cents per kilowatt hour. Of course, you if you've got per kilowatt hour, you've got to multiply it by a thousand, divide it by a hundred. That's the same as multiplying it by ten. Now, another tool that I didn't mention, and here's what I'm going to do on this one. I'm going to go to a couple of places. First, I'll go to the... Uh, I'm going to the website, which I've heard is really sucky. I can't... It's, I'm limited, really, by this wiki spaces thing, so that's my kind of excuse. Now... In this website, somewhere, I have files that automatically read data and get 
get uh, merchant price data. Uh, my objective is to really make something where you can get merchant prices for all over the world, and you can go all the way back to when these markets, markets started. These are the various things. Now, I'm also going to show you where to find uh, the same items on the Google Drive or, or the disk, and that's if you go to electricity and then you go to... Uh, conventional electricity and spot prices, and then you have this one that says uh, uh, European prices. And this one, you just click Retrieve German Prices, and it gets them all. Now let's talk about the implications of this, really. All right. Here, so we looked at this one, 450. Look at the real market prices for wholesale electric power. 40. Well, in, in fact, they were lower. This electric price was down here 30s, and then it went up to 60. This is 450, and even the last one, which was 9.47 or 94 euro per megawatt hour, it's way, way off the scale. It's not, I guess, that far. It's somewhere up here, and the current prices in the merchant markets, and this is what they call base load prices, are about 30, and this also all of this merchant data, you know, you can graph it in all kinds of different ways. I think generally the uh, relative to the gas price, I didn't get that sentence out, is, is, is really the way to look at it because they're all highly correlated. This one's not so much. And really you can see the effect of wind and solar because the blue line was kind of above the red line. Then the this thing called the implied heat rate tumbled. The blue line went below the red line with all this surplus. Now it's a little bit back, but the kind of prices are low. There's another case, this Spanish case was fascinating, really. They had even higher feed-in tariffs, actually, than Germany. And the real implication of this is not the high levels, but how they came rocketing down. And this was the exact intention of the feed-in tariffs, I think they came down a lot more than people wanted them to. Okay, just a little bit of background. So Germany had a limit on their capacity, but Spain didn't, and they got way too much and were stuck with 24 billion and retroactively then changed everything. Now, just to introduce things, for me, this is a key thing. When you look down here, this is just a specifications of a panel. It says STC, a thousand watt per meter squared. That's the key. That defines the capacity. The de capacity is defined as a thousand. So, if you have um, uh, the whole year, let's say on average, for some reason, the whole year was 500, which would be ridiculous. But on average, the what kilowatt hours that hit a panel were 500 for, on average for the whole year. Maybe in the daytime they were 1,000, in the nighttime they were zero. So the capacity factor would be 50%. Okay, And the yield would be 8,760 divided by 2. That's how you define these things, and we're going to work on them. Uh, well, I'll, I'll be discussing them. Okay. So all you have to do, you don't have to go, and you, it has nothing to do when you're looking at the capacity factor before you hit the panel. It has nothing at all to do with the type of the panel. Okay. So, and that's what I guess this thing says. And then another tool, I'm going to go through this tool now, is if you go to the uh, uh, website, okay, um, a little more slowly here. And then you go to the uh, read the da download stuff from the internet. One of the things I hope is this I, I hope I have it here is this uh, read the PV Insights. Okay. And that just there, there is it's read PV Insights. And I also put it on the Google Drive in. Uh, chapter number one, and in chapter number one, all of these kind of things that get data, including how to get data on currencies and
commodity prices and all of that stuff that's a lot of it's relevant to solar and uh, uh, one of them has this read PV insights and I've oops okay it's getting here and here I go through and read the data from the internet on different dates it puts it it goes it simply goes and puts all the data into these spreadsheets and they're a mess I didn't even get rid of the advertisements but you can just go through and find where the uh, uh, and I didn't get rid of the merges but you can see that get the average uh, price for modules and I even tried to kind of show you what a module is I tried to show you some some data on uh, on polysilicon prices so so just a minute and uh, okay here's some history on polysilicon it was spiked in 2008 and everybody kind of expected it to come up again and here's the polysilicon so that went uh, that's going up a little bit the price of the panels continue to go down and the biggest deals since 2015 it's gone from 600 down to down to 318 it's half just in the last couple of years so if we return to this uh, oh God, if we return to this thing that says oh my gosh the prices came rocketing down this was in 2014 this kind of extends it they've come down by another at least half and there have been recent transactions that everybody knows that about 2.3 way way down here so this I just think this is whatever I, I shouldn't make my own opinions too much but this is a real revolution it used to be there was a saying that uh, you know coal is is fired by coal gas fired by natural gas blah 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 and solar was fired by subsidies or fired whatever it was fueled by subsidies not anymore so I'm gonna copy this uh, uh, into our PowerPoint slide so that's another one of the tools now if you want to use this first of all I'm not going through all the the, the uh, macros and all this stuff but you can look at them and if you want to update this for other months in case I forget I try to update this and put this back on the uh, uh, website you first click on this one and it just goes and it just gets I promise not to look at the macro and I'm breaking my promise it just used the workbooks dot open to go and get it and then it makes a little file name and then this one takes the new data and formats it using the indirect function so it'll put it in a new column for you and do all that automatically so the graph is all updated and you can look and see how how all of this stuff works I really think this is a kind of key thing to do so now I'm just going to review the solar yield uh, we talked I'm going to look at some PV cyst which is this program I think made in Switzerland I think and then there's this EU site and this thing that in the US this PV watt PV watts I think now whenever we look at this it, it, at least in the EU website they call HM they, this is the global irradiation I'm reading this that that hits the panel okay and then you have fi the final capacity that goes out in the system those are the two key things and when you take this one divided by that one you get the performance ratio if you can get them on the same basis that's all we have to do it's not so complicated okay so you know this is just a review now I didn't do this really in the last case but we had four different sources the capacity where we hit the panel when we do this capacity factor and again this is just taking the kilowatt hours per meter squared averaged over the year or watt hours per meter squared divided by a thousand because a thousand defines the capacity 
And that's the key to just get that basic thing. It took me a little while to get it. But then we have these different, this helioscope gave a different uh, 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 basic raw data for the same kind of case I looked at. It was uh, Cancun, and then this PV cyst gave you a higher one. And both the, the other ones, this PV watts really wasn't exactly the same location, but they gave you a similar number. Now, once you move to the electricity production, remember that's the that's this thing here. Once you move to that one, the the we get a very different answer again. PV cyst gives you the high number. They had a high performance ratio. This one had a medium one, and the ones you get from the website had a much lower performance ratio. That's why that's really the subject of a lot of this graph. Now, the other thing I do, okay, the other tool, which I think very few people looked at ever, is if you go to chapter number five of the Google Drive, chapter 5 on electricity, there's one called renewable energy, and in renewable energy there's this thing called resource studies, and in this resource study, I've got one for wind and solar and all that, and hydro, there's this thing that says database on the solar. And here's the key thing for this one, I believe, we got all this P90s and all this, I want to see how real plants not fake ones, how real plants have operated. Something happened, this one went down, so we can just see kind of how much the actual variation was from year to year. That's the key, because from month to month, it's a lot less. Now there's a little bit of data. You would love 10 years or 15 years, like you can get on the hydro, and you'd love to see these kind of results where the variation is very small, and that means if you use this uh, norm inverse to get, the, uh, 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 to get the P99, and then you can take the P99 or P90 divided by the average, if this is P99, is only 2.3% for those three years. So this seems to suggest that, oh, this one was a bigger one. And uh, let me see, so you can go through those. This was a smaller one. You can see actually what's happened rather than just what the consultant studies are happening. And that's I, desperate to get that kind of data. And there's all this stuff where it tells you, ah, you know, you use the sum if and average if and all that. Now, this is a in the EU website. This is what we went through in the last video, just a little bit review. But you can get the historic variation in the solar. That's wonderful that you can get the kind of, uh, uh, this is the annual solar production. And remember, this would be this thing that you, where, where you collect the, before the performance ratio. The, uh, this could be called point of access or power, uh, energy re received on the collecting plane or something like this, and you can then say, okay, here's the capacity bef factor for all these years before, again, that's dividing by our famous 1,000. You just take this total kilowatt hours and divide it by 8, 7, 60 hours and then divide it by another 1,000, and you get the capacity factor, and then you can get these P90s and P50s, this had a little more variation. This here's the standard deviation to an 2.15%. And then you back in to the DSCR. There's this famous kind of race thing that says if you, the percent reduction in cash flow that you can absorb if you have a DSCR is the DSCR minus 1. So let's say it's 2. 2 minus 1 is 1 divided by 2. You get a 50% get a reduction. But you can go the other way and figure out if you've got a percent reduction, how much is the, how much DSCR is necessary? That's DSCR, the, how much DSCR we, do we need to cover the P90 in this case? All right, and then I took an actual case where the, ac, in the actual case, the P50, the, the P90 divided by 50, P50 was, I don't know, about 6%. You need a DSCR 1.06. I'm not giving you very consistent results. The, these seem to show you need a very small one, 
this was bigger, and then and then this study uh, by somebody in a real case suggests it's pretty small. So that's the yield. Now the big thing here is really addressing what's going on with this performance ratio. These are pretty close. I don't know what happened here, but then we get some pretty big differences, especially in this performance ratio. So first thing is to I'm going to just describe this really kind of the end result of this. The end result is that you can, if you have some data on the ambient temperature, if you have some data on the ambient temperature, you can kind of make a formula. And, and you also have this thing called the temperature coefficient which you can just go to website and get. You can look at my collection of temperature coefficients. These temperature coefficients me measure the percent change in the, the percent change uh, without, like, 10 would be 10%. Percent change given a change in the temperature. So you can take this temperature coefficient that's published, multiply it by the difference between the temperature at the panel versus the standard, the STC, the uh, 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 standard testing condition temperature of 25. And then you can combine that. So then you can get the loss due to the temperature. If you can make some formula like, like this, the real problem is that the panel temperature is never, you, you can't get that. And you know it's going to be a lot more than the, 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 the ambient temperature, which is always reported. So, first, before we go through this, let's just go through some terms. You always see this hor globe, horizontal global irradiation. That's if you had a flat surface. So then you move from that one to how much irradiation you have on the planes. And if you tilt them at least anywhere but the equator, you're going to get some more. And then they have some corrections for this IAM. Apparently that means like a reflection and stuff like that. And finally, at the very end, that's what I talked about before. How much power do you get? Now, here's my trick to doing this performance ratio. I hope this is useful to you. Okay, you can convert, as I said, the energy that hits the plane into a capacity factor. And you can get the final capacity factor as how, how much you're producing, what the average is, just like an airplane, how much average seats you're selling compared to the maximum. So I do this horrible, simplistic diagram that you get the capacity that hits the plane, capacity that goes to the grid, the performance ratio is this one divided by this one, measured as a yield or a capacity factor. So here's a, a kind of PV cyst. They always give you some months, and then they give you the global horizontal ra radiation. You're not going to use that. They give you the ambient temperature, not the temperature that hits the plane. Okay? And then they give you the effective irradiation. Some people call this point of access. And you can take this number, this number, and divide that by 8760 to get the kilowatt hours instead of over the year for one single hour, the average, and then you have to divide it by a thousand again, and you get this capacity factor. Now, if you know the capacity, then they give you this one, and they give you a different unit for it. But this one is energy you put into the grid, and that's from the panels themselves. So you, if you know the capacity, the capacity factor is the energy divided by 8760 to get the average divided by the capacity and you get you can express that as a yield or a capacity factor this one divided by this one is this so you just have to always kind of find these two things and divide them out and if you don't believe in me you can look at this and then they have these wonderful little loss diagrams okay and they're okay, I guess. And it shows you here, but they're all in different units. I suggest get the capacity factor here. Capacity factor, capacity factor. Final capacity factor. And you can see this divided by this is the 
performance ratio, and you can see what losses are occurring, and the biggest one is simply is is always going to be this uh, temperature thing, which is really the subject. So I made a waterfall diagram, which is one of the saddest things in my life. No, I'm sure there are sadder things. But you go to the disk, or you go to the website. Okay, uh, yeah. Why I mean actual solar models. Let's go back to chapter one. In chapter one, you go to Excel utilities, and then you go to this one that says waterfall charts. If you have Excel 2016 or 2013. Okay, the problem with 2016 and why I it didn't finish saying how sad it was is they put these waterfall charts in there so you can kind of do it yourself. I'm so sad about this because I spent so much time on it. I haven't really looked at how to do it, so I still use my old thing. Now, when you do... So, so uh, uh, where were we? So this is the the same kind of thing, but I expressed it, this one, as a waterfall chart. And let's make it a little bigger. So you can see here's the global, here's the increase you get to the tilt, that's green, here's the total one you point of access, I called it here. And then you can see what the loss factors are. You can see the biggest one in terms of the capacity is this temperature one. And then you get the end and divide that by this one. Again, that's the performance ratio. And if you want to see how to do this, now I have a file that this one I haven't put in the uh, website yet. Here's a, I put, I collected a whole bunch of this data that people gave me, okay? And on this data, uh, just a minute, here I put the, when you make this waterfall chart, you just got to leave a blank where you want the blue one. You start with the first capacity factor, and then you go through the incremental changes, and you leave a blank there. And then once you have this open, you just s select this whole thing and press shift Control v and then you get a... I'll do that perhaps, and then I, I want to stop, okay? Uh, you, you get this kind of uh, thing, okay? And then you just go through and make the... Okay, that's enough of the waterfall chart. And then I, a couple of the, uh, so I collect a couple of these PV cyst things that have more detail, perhaps, on the, on the, uh, 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 all the losses. Okay, so I've got one in India, one in Australia, this one in India. This had tracking, so this had a really big, increase due to the tracking and then it came down and you had a decrease due to the to the temperature or was this one I didn't put the chart here for, for our Mexico one okay now so you can define I'm messing around with the silly PowerPoint stuff but the final capacity can be expressed the capacity factor could be expressed as capacity factor at the point of access that's the higher one. This is the lower one. Times 1 minus loss 1, 1 minus loss 2, blah, 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 blah. All those losses. And then you could say, well, the final capacity factor, you could just split it into temperature and everything else. That's what I did. Okay. And then you can say, well, uh, uh, since if we know the performance ratio... And the temperature, we can derive all of the other losses and put them all into one kind of big blob. Okay. So that's what I did here with our various places. Here was the temperature effect. Now, this was very disappointing. I spent some time on this, and here's what I was expecting. I was expecting to have a higher temperature loss when the temperature was higher. The opposite occurred. There was a Middle East one with much higher temperature. I got the average and the maximum. And the, the temperature effect was the lowest. Now, I don't know if it's the consultants putting it in, but it does. I hope this is somewhat useful to you because now you can start to see and question these things. Here, this which one had the lowest temperature? This one had a low temperature. And we still had a high temperature effect. 
This one had a much higher one and a lower temperature effect. What's going on? And then you can look at the performance ratio and get this thing where you get all the other losses. Okay, and so what I did here is I'm putting all this, this, this uh, on, on the website, all right, and we go through and uh, uh, get, put all this data in. Now, when you put this data in, okay, if you have one of these uh, things open, let's get this one, okay, if I just select this, okay, you can just select this, copy it over, and use the read PDF. I'm, I'm not going to do that even right now. Or you can just uh, uh, get all of this data and just copy it over with the read PDF. Not very complicated. That you could almost do with a, a text to columns because we have just one... Uh, 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 one word here, okay? All right, enough of that. So that's another tool, the text, the, the read PDF, which I seem to have open because I did use it. Okay, it was more helpful when you wanted to get these loss factors all in, and it was pretty, it worked out pretty well here. Actually, when you use the read PDF, here's what happened, just a minute. Okay, and then we, we uh, here's the kind of the raw data, and then we got, oops, we got all the, here's the Cancun and the raw data, and just kind of put it all in a nice little column for you. So it really worked. All right. Okay, so, that's that one. Now, so, again, if you have this, you just have to find the, the the radiation this one the effective radiation I already did this that there's our our performance ratio now unlike this really disappointing result where you got different you know you would expect a much bigger temperature effect with higher temperature if they had the same temperature coefficient which I haven't gone into enough yet but within the months if you make a scatter plot and to make a scatter plot just to review how to make a scatter plot of this stuff if you want to see it now here's the little trick is you just select uh, here the x-axis has to have nothing so this is the temperature against the performance ratio but this has to have something and then it'll put the temperature on the x-axis and I'll do it with F11. I did the other others with alternate F1. You change the chart type, make it a scatter plot. It a lot of times doesn't. You you don't like the you you want to adjust the scale yourself, so you make the scale. So this was just F11. But the big trick was just this thing with the uh, uh, get some words out. This thing with the the x-axis and then you can you can kind of uh, hmm, uh, put a trend line and, and get a your little regression analysis and put the equations on the chart okay so that's all I did I'm gonna press alt E L and get rid of that one and then we see, all right, well, this was a kind of nice thing. This almost looks like a temperature coefficient. But we got to be a little bit careful because we got to get kind of the starting point right. So these are a couple of the other ones. Some of the other ones didn't have a, a smooth a line. And I would ask the consultants, why? This, why isn't, what's going on here? Are the losses, is something else causing the performance ratio to change? It should basically only be the temperature. And to compute these performance ratios by month, you do the same thing here. You get how many days in a month, how many hours in a month. You take the capacity factor at the collector versus the capacity factor at the grid, and you get the month-by-month -month performance ratio in case, you know, they didn't do it for you. Now let's talk about this temperature coefficient and the problem with it. 
it's the change of the temperature code. It's the change in, it's like a slope. It's a change in the, the output, percent change in the output, percent change in the, the output of the grid when you have a, a one degree change in the temperature. So, for example, this sharp solar thing that I picked up from the Internet, if you have one degree change in, in the temperature, you get a 0.485%. Not a big change, 0.4, less than half of a percent. But you do get a, a, a reduction. So the problem here is a name that you can, oh, I, I spent a lot of time reading up. How would you get the panel temperature? This percent change in the, this change in the temperature is not the ambient temperature that's always showed here, shown on these things. It's the actual temperature of the panel. How do we get that? Uh, so here, here are some examples of temperature coefficients before we go to the next thing. And here's somebody else. They just simply added 30. That seemed kind of arbitrary for me. So you got a temperature coefficient, you take the ambient, and you just add 30. That wasn't very good. So if you go through a little tiny bit of algebra, and notice I could not spell temperature. Sorry about this. Why didn't it get this one? I need to change that. Okay, and uh, okay, you don't have to see me do any any spell checks here, but the temperature. So here's our basic temperature coefficient. You take the panel temperature, not the uh, not the uh, ambient temperature, and you subtract the STC temperature, and you multiply that by the temperature coefficient. So this is 50. You get 50 minus 25, or 25, multiplied by some negative number, negative point something, and it gives you the percent loss, but it's not. It's multiplied by 100. You know, it gives you as a, a number. So let's say we know the temperature coefficient, because we do from up here. Now let's say we also know the, this percent loss, which we do from up here. Because we did this uh, over here. This was the, uh, 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 you know, we got, the, we, we got the temperature effect. Okay? So we have those two kind of things, and you do it by month. Okay, in fact, what you do is you get the performance ratio by month and you reduce the other losses, so I wasn't quite right just then. But then you can rearrange this a little bit. Okay, so move this one over here. Mm, excuse me, and then you take the panel temperature as the, this one, and you finally get the... And, and then finally, when you get this panel temperature, you can make it as a function of the ambient temperature and see what you get. So that's what I did over here. Okay, this just summarizes the, real, the results. So here's the performance ratio, here's the other losses. You derive the temperature kind of effect on the performance ratio, and then you, you, you uh, so then you can, once you have this uh, uh, temperature effect, then you can I'm sorry, the percent loss, then you can get the, the panel temperature. Okay, and then you take this panel temperature and do a little regression against the ambient temperature, and you can say, well, we have an equation. We take the ambient temperature plus 50, times 1.16 or whatever that is, plus 15, and that gives you a forecast, and it does really well. And that would be really cool. That would be really, really cool, because then all you would have to do is go take the ambient temperature, go find the temperature coefficient, and then you can just stick it in the, this equation. You can get the panel temperature, and you can get that for all of the... So these, you just put some constants in, and then you go to this EU website that reports the ambient temperature, you get the panel temperature, you combine that with the, the temperature coefficient, and you get this biggest effect, this biggest thing that drives the performance ratio. Here's the problem. I did it with another one of these PV-SYST ones, and I get a different 
result. It wasn't that bad, really. Well, you know, and you put a different temperature coefficient in. This has to be consistent with your, your panel, and you get a different result here. But this one, I got to get different ones. So the problems are we don't have kind of stable coefficients on here. And I'm going to end the, uh, 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 the, the video here, okay? So this got, went through some of the tools, ranging from the waterfall diagram to the, you know, PV cyst to the database to these files. All of these files that I just showed you will be on this uh, website. I'm putting, including this, a PowerPoint slide that I'm just kind of working through, they will all be in this right here, okay? I haven't put them up yet. Uh, I'll put the PowerPoint slides here and then some resource analysis, and I'll put the, the files right over here. All right, that's that one. There are going to be a couple more. Oh, long video, sorry.